and, and on, on our children. children. Now, now let's skip down, down to verse 45. Because, because of time this morning, I would, I would love to read the whole chapter and read it in Matthew, Matthew Mark, and Luke, and John. And but let's just suffice to say that Jesus willingly went through the crucifixion. And, and we come in verse 45 to the point, it says, Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Now the sixth hour was noon, and the ninth hour was 3 p.m. So from noon until 3 p.m., there was a solar eclipse that caused darkness to be over all the land. And at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when I went back and I looked up that full translation in the Greek, I found it quite interesting because in, in all actuality, what Jesus was saying at this point was not why have you forsaken me, even though God did turn his back on him because he was carrying all the sins of the world. But what he was actually saying to him in the Greek, it translates, why have you entangled me as a rhetorical question? In, in other words, words Jesus, Jesus knew the answer before he asked the question. question. And, and when he said, you, you have entangled me, what he was referring to was when Abraham had been asked by God to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, and just as Abraham had the knife up on the threshing floor off of Mount Moriah, and he was about to kill Isaac as a sacrifice that he thought God was asking him to do, just as he was about to put the knife to Isaac's throat, there was a ram entangled in a bush. And Jesus was referring back to thousands of years earlier because the ram that took the place of Isaac still was not a good enough blood sacrifice to cover all the sins of mankind. And Jesus, I believe at that moment, said to the Father, send me. And thousands of years later, a little girl named Mary accepted Jesus into her womb. She was a beautiful virgin little girl that said, I will give my life to obey the will of the Father. Now, 33 years later, we have Jesus having gone through all the suffering that it took to get him to the point of the cross. I can just imagine what was going on in the temple while Jesus was being crucified, and Jesus said, it is finished, my blood is enough, it will cover all the sins of mankind. What I'm about to do will end any more blood sacrifices. There won't be any need for them because what I'm doing is enough. And then at the moment, Caiaphas is there ready to go in and give the sacrifice inside the Holy of Holies. All of a sudden, the earthquakes and there's already a solar eclipse, and the world is going into, into a convulsion state, and unseen hands come down, and they take this 60 feet tall, 30 feet wide, 6 inches deep veil that separated the, the outer court, the inner court, and then the Holy of Holies where the presence of God was. And I believe that God's hands grabbed that veil, and it says that it ripped from the top to the bottom. Not just a little thin piece of fabric, but a very, very thick, huge veil was ripped from the very top to the bottom. And I can just imagine it falling to the floor. How much God intimately loves you. How much he longs for you to know who he is inside of your being. To know that he's with you forever. That he will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. That he is risen in your life. And he longs to finish the walk with you. When he said it is finished. He meant it then, and he means it today. So no matter what you're going through, no matter if you've been in a turmoil place, or you've lost your peace, or, or you've worked to the point where you just can't wait until you get a break, here's the real, the real truth. Jesus is always with you. He is always your peace. He will always make a way for you to walk with him every day. All you have to do is continually recognize and realize that he is the Lord, he is the Savior of the world, but also for you. He lives in you and he lives in me when we give our lives to him. He freely gave us his life to pay the price for us. He died for us so that we can live for him.